Hello, everybody. My name is Rob Banke, co-founder at Halborn, and thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Critical Spotlight. Today, we have another fantastic engineer over at Halborn, Juan Xavier Valverde. Juan, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about what you found. Hi, everybody. I'm Juan Javier. I'm an offensive security engineer here at Halborn uh, with nearly four years of experience now in the blockchain space. I am part of the on-chain team, and I specialize on Solidity and EVM-based smart contracts. The protocol in which I found the issue is a multi-asset vault that allows users to deposit various tokens like USDC, DAI, or any other supported asset into the vault and then receive shares representing this deposit. So then the system uses these funds across different strategies to maximize returns. And then it allows users to withdraw their assets in any other supported token of their choice. So during the review, I discovered an interesting issue with how the protocol handled tokens with these different decimal places. So the protocol's share calculation was using raw token amounts, uh, ignoring the underlying decimals of each asset. So for example, USDC with six decimals and DAI with 18 were treated as equivalent in the system. So this created an exploit path where an attacker could deposit a high decimal token like DAI and then have a huge amount of shares minted and then redeem those shares to withdraw for a low decimal token like USDC. And this allowed them to extract up to 1 trillion more times uh, the value than they deposited, even though the economical value of both assets is expected to be just 1 US dollar. You know, this is just an example of what we're doing all day, every day at Halbor, you know, just combing through all of the code um, and reviewing it nonstop. So, I mean, I just tell the audience a little bit about your methodology. Like, how did you go about finding this? My methodology usually starts with like, thoroughly understanding the code base, reading through documentation if available, and try to understand the protocol's intended functionality try to map out the key flows in the system, like the movement of assets and such. And if time allows, I usually try to draw some diagrams to understand the execution. So in this particular case, seeing that the protocol supported multiple assets with different decimal places, immediately that raised a red flag for me. So then as we usually do with serious uh, security issues, uh, I created a proof of concept to demonstrate this. So I simulated an attack by depositing one die. Then I attempted to redeem all the huge amount of shares obtained in exchange for USDC. And then it was confirmed that this behavior of the code allowed the attacker to extract many times more the value than they had deposited. You know, obviously, as we find these things, you know, we are alerting our customers right away. Um, what, what did we recommend? What, how, how does someone go about fixing this particular bug that you found? Yeah, well, in this case, we recommended two different approaches. One was a simple one, which is to implement proper decimal, uh, normalization before any other operations. So essentially converting all token values to a standard decimal format before, uh, performing calculations. And the second approach, which is more of a heavy change in the, in the system, is to redesign the, ent the entire accounting system to track each supported asset separately rather than summing raw uh, token amounts across different assets. But ultimately, the idea is the same, is to ensure that the differences in decimal uh, precision don't create unintended consequences or security issues in the code. Yeah, definitely makes a lot of sense. So... You know, in general, what can companies do to prevent writing bugs like this? I believe that organizations in general should incorporate security throughout the entire development life cycle. So this should start by writing comprehensive tests that go beyond the typical happy path scenarios and try to include unusual scenarios and uh, test edge cases. Um, also, in, I believe internal code reviews can be very helpful. So having uh, team members analyze uh, each other's work while trying to think from an attacker's perspective can be very helpful. 
but ultimately, it's always best to have an external security expertise through professional audits, like the ones we perform here at Halbon, which can provide much deeper expertise in identifying these complex uh, vulnerabilities that internal teams might miss. Additionally, I believe protocols should consider participating in bug bounty programs because security, as we know, is in a one-time thing. So having multiple independent security researchers continuously looking at the code can significantly strengthen the overall security posture of the system. Totally. Well, that makes perfect sense. Well, Juan, uh, we can wrap it up there. Thank you so much for you know, doing this comprehensive uh, analysis for us and for the, for the audience, for the community. And uh, thank you all for watching another episode of Critical Spotlight. See you at the next one. Mm -hmm.